My name is Mike Shires. I'm on the faculty here at the School of Public Policy. Um, it's my privilege to welcome you to the faculty series uh, where we uh, share some of the work that our faculty are currently engaged in, talk about some of the contemporary political issues that are out there. Uh, this is the last meeting this semester of this faculty series, but don't worry, there's more things you can come and see. Uh, in three weeks from today, actually, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, our second year class will, pre will be presenting their capstone policy research. And there will actually be an event at the Executive Dining Center over here uh, in the Grassy Dio Villas where they share the product of their semester's work. And the capstone is, is a great opportunity to see sort of what the next generation of policy leaders and wonks are capable of doing. And it's one of my favorite things uh, to be involved in. That's from 3 to 5 on April 16th, so in three weeks. The next day at 10.30 in the morning, that same group of students will uh, be graduating. And you're all invited to participate in that as well. And that will be down in the Alumni Park, I believe, unless the weather's bad. But that never happens in Malibu. <laughs> um, you know, there, there's sort of a serendipity that goes along in the world. Some folks call it serendipity. I actually believe it's more divine intervention. And the presence of our speaker today was the result of a random airport delay. Um, we were both in Washington trying to get home, he to Phoenix and me to L.A. And they asked for volunteers to get bumped from the flight, and we figured out a way to be those volunteers and get home faster, which was the best part of it, because they put us on non-stops and, and we got home faster. Uh, but uh, Dr. Robbins is one of the leading uh, published experts in the nation on ethics and health care. Uh, he, uh, he has eight books and over 250 articles and chapters and reviews on topics relating to health care policy, health care reform, ethics in health policy. Um, he has a PhD in philosophy, which is uh, where, the one, where the foundations in ethics are, are particularly well defined, from Boston College, and he also has a postdoctoral master's degree in public health from Harvard's uh, Public Health School. Uh, he was the National Fund for Medical Education Fellow in ethics at uh, the Harvard uh, Public Health School as well. Uh, his work blends ethics and public policy in an area where the implications of ethical choices have the most severe and direct implications, not only on the lives of the patients and those affected, but on the quality of our entire society. How we treat sort of our weakest and most vulnerable people really defines who we are as a people and a culture. Um, his work has shaped many pieces of legislation. He's participated both as an expert, as an advocate, and at times as a lobbyist. Uh, one of the areas where he has made sort of the most significant contribution, or a sig very significant contribution, was in the hospice Medicare benefit that was approved by Congress uh, just uh, in the last decade. Um, he has numerous honors. Uh, National Manage or Managed Healthcare Magazine named him one of the top ten keenest thinkers in the issue of managed care. Uh, he served on the President's Commission on Ethical Issues in Biomedicine, Biomedical, and Behavioral Research. He was on the White House Education Advisory Committee on Complementary and Alternative Medicine. Uh, and he also serves on the Education Advisory Board for the National Endowment for Humanities. Uh, the reason for this tremendous uh, inter uh, this list listing of his uh, accomplishments is to point out that as he's up here, he's somebody who not only knows people and processes, but he knows about the stuff that's going on in our public policy in Washington. And his talk today is going to focus on the ethical foundations of an Obama health care reform. So with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Dennis Roberts. What a gracious introduction. Can I go home now? <laughs> this is great. I'm so delighted to be here today. Uh, Pepperdine has been a, kind of an interesting place for me. The ability to teach in the School of Public Policy and share some of the things I've learned over the year is really quite exciting. And that sort of ethical foundation and uh, commitment to stewardship and making things better makes this really a delightful uh, place uh, to be. I'm surrounded today with students I have in classes that have given me wonderful ideas, so I have something to talk about today with uh, my colleague who comes to my class, uh, uh, Richard Emer, who just spoke about health care reform a couple of weeks ago and enlightened my students uh, with, our, with our dean, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm just delighted to be here. I'm going to talk about one of the most uh, sort of contentious and controversial areas that's going on now in terms of some of the political changes uh, in our country uh, dealing with health care. And I want to do what I call, I guess, looking at the ethical substrate. Uh, to me, we can't begin to even try to answer any of the questions about what should we do or what should we not do 
without having some understanding of the ethical foundation that we're talking about, something to build upon. You know, if we build an edifice, as Descartes told us, on a shaky foundation, uh, the whole building is going to be tumbling down. So we have to ask some fundamental questions. So by ethics, let me start off with that. By ethics, I mean principles that dictate what we should and shouldn't do, or things that we've looked at, and we've looked at with some kind of consternation or depth, and say, you know, there's a number of ways we can solve this problem. But this alternative to me seems to be the most realistic. So I want to try to blend together this idea of principles, of what's right and wrong, good and bad, what we should do and what we shouldn't do, and ends or consequences, goals or results. Because to come up with a principle or a theory without having anything concrete that's going to work doesn't wash real well in the uh, public policy arena. The first question that has to be asked in this whole domain is whether healthcare should be or is it a right or a privilege? Uh, is it something that should be afforded to individuals by virtue of being a citizen um, or a resident uh, of this country? Uh, that, we have a, uh, that we have a healthy um, uh, uh, citizenry, we have a healthy workforce, um, and, and if indeed healthcare is a right, how much of that right should be afforded? Is it to basic healthcare? Is it to have peace of mind in times of illness and emergency? Is it to have a sense of security so we can live our lives? Or is it a privilege? If we can pay for it, you get it, and if not, the heck with you. And I think, as Mike Shire said so beautifully in his uh, eloquent introduction, a society should be judged by how it deals with caring for its most vulnerable, not just those that have the resources to get what they want when they need it, if they want it, when they need it. A pivot or a foundation of this whole area is are dealing with, or is a foundation dealing with a few individual concerns. One has to do with access, the ability to avail ourselves, access and avail ourselves of services that are out there. And another has to do with the quality of health care. Now, that sounds simple enough. I've heard people say, well, wait a minute, you can't have all three, have two. You want access and availability, or you want quality and access. You can't have all three. And I believe we can have all three. How do we get it? What are the problems now? Well, some of the problems we have now are that if you really need health care in this country, and you have a pre-existing illness, the likelihood of you getting health care is pretty low. We have negative underwriting. We have insurance companies that will preclude people from pre -existing, because of pre-existing illnesses. And if you really need health care, it's very hard to get. This morning, uh, when I got up early in terms of my final preparation for talking today, I opened up my email to see that the American uh, AHIP, AHIP, America's Health Insurance Plans, which has been the trade association for managed care and a very, very, very powerful lobby in terms of achieving health care in this country, has decided that rather than being reacted upon and become a victim, that they are going to do things and take steps to reduce negative underwriting for pre-existing illness. So this is a huge step. We're already seeing momentum. Um, there are many things that Obama would like to do in terms of changing health care, which may be uh, a wish, and some of them may become a reality. But he's taken a chance to try to do what needs to be done. We've had three generations. Three decades at least, uh, not generations, three decades of tourniquets, temporary fixes, solutions that didn't work, aiming at every sector of healthcare. We looked at health manpower, we looked at healthcare facilities, we looked at given specialties, we looked at all kinds of things, and we haven't come up with good solutions. We have the same old problem. 